to be honest, it's a little early to be developing uh, a deep understanding of something called the depth spectra that we're going to learn about now. Deep down, they are really out there. But they are so powerful and so useful in telling us about or confirming chemical structures and chemical formulas that we are going to go ahead and introduce them now. Beyond the standard proton and carbon-13 experiments that we've been working with now, there are many, many others. And depth spectra, distortionless enhancement by polarization transfer, are, are, are an example of these. And we're going to work with two of them. In order to introduce them, I have to remind you that in an organic structure, we run across four types of carbon, four kinds of carbon, characterized by the number of hydrogens that are attached. We have the methyl groups, the CH3s. We have methylene groups, CH2s. We have methine groups, CHs. And we have the quaternary carbons, those that have no protons attached. Depth spectra are essentially a fancy type of a carbon-13 spectrum, but they do a little bit of magic beyond the standard carbon spectrum. We're going to look at two of them, and they're going to be called Dept-90 and Dept-135. We call them Dept-90 and Dept-135 because, to be honest, saying distortionless enhancement by polarization transfer a number of times is enough to make you just want to kill yourself. So, Dept-90, Dept-135. Here's what they do. A Dept-90 spectrum, ideally, will show you carbons that only have one proton attached. Only the methine carbons. All of the others, your methyls, your methylenes, and your quaternaries, will either be gone completely, or they will be greatly reduced and be little stumps, little bumps in the baseline. The Dept-135 spectrum takes that even farther. What it does is shows you carbons with odd number of protons, your CHs and your CH3s, meth methine and methyls, up. The peaks are in their normal positions. Carbons with an even number of protons, and for us that just means methylene group, CH2, those peaks will be inverted. They'll be pointing down. I'll show you examples of that in just a moment. Either DEP90 or DEP135 will not show quaternary carbons. It's a powerful combination because if you put together a carbon-13, a DEP90, and a DEP135, you can then characterize every single carbon in a molecule depending upon how many protons it has attached. And that is very helpful in either confirming formula or in building up chemical formula based upon the spectra. We don't often do depth spectra for simpler molecules because, frankly, the fire hose of information in NMR is more than enough for us to figure out the structure. But for larger molecules, they can be very powerful uh, experiments to help us along. I'm going to show you two sets of these spectra, one for a known molecule, one for an unknown. The known molecule is going to be sugar, sucrose. Almost everybody may be familiar with its formula, C12H22O11. It has 12 carbons in it. Here is its carbon spectrum, and indeed it does show all 12 carbons. If we were interested in confirming that this sample of stuff were it truly sucrose, we could measure how many carbons it has. It does have 12. We could use the DEP90 and the DEP135 to measure exactly how many quaternary carbons, methine, methylene, and methyl carbons this molecule has. If you look at the structure, the known structure of sucrose, you will note that there is only one quaternary carbon in the molecule. There are eight methines in there, quite a few, three methylenes, CH2s, and no methyl groups. Here are the carbon DEP90 and DEP135 spectra of sucrose. 
Usually I like to present them in this stacked format where the three spectra are vertically aligned so that the peaks, you know, the peaks are right over the top of each other. And if you look at from the carbon 13 to the depth 90, you will notice there are eight large peaks all standing straight up here. The peak at 103 ppm is gone. The other three clustered around 60 ppm while there are slightly in, are a bit inverted and much, much smaller, much, much truncated compared to the regular carbon. I take this as pretty strong evidence. We do have eight CHs in there. Looking at the depth 135 now, remember depth 135 will have carbons with odd number of protons, CHs and CH3s, with their peaks pointing up. Here we see all eight of the peaks in the depth 90 are also up in the 135. There are no additional peaks up, no methyl groups in here. All eight peaks that are up in the depth 135 are indeed methons, CHs. These three peaks are now large again and inverted. They are upside down. Those are clearly three CH2 groups. And once again, the peak at around 103 ppm is missing in the depth 135 as well. Together, they make nice evidence that the 12 carbons of this molecule, eight of them are CHs, three of them are CH2s, one of them is quaternary, and there are no methyl groups, exactly what we would expect from sucrose. The next molecule to look at is an unknown. We're not going to have any other information about it yet. We will see this spec these set a spectra again later when we add to it proton and lots of others. But I want you just to see the power of the, of the carbon and the depth spectra when looking at something that we have very little information about right now. If you look at the carbon spectra by its spectrum by itself, we have a chloroform peak in there. This is a chloroform sample. It's that thing sitting right there at classic place, 77 ppm. That we can ignore. The remaining peaks, there are 11 of them in here. The depth 90 spectra, you'll notice how almost all of these peaks are either gone or badly truncated. There is only one of them, this one here at around 38 ppm, that is nice and tall in the depth 90. Of the 11 carbons that we saw in the original carbon spectrum, we have one methine, one CH. Now it's on to the depth 135. Here we see the peak at 38 standing nice and tall, like it was in the depth 90, but now it's joined by these two over here. Remember, these would have to be methyl groups. Methyl groups have the characteristic of not being in the depth 90 and pointing up in the depth 135. All of these peaks here are pointing down. We have seven of them, and so we conclude that we must have seven CH2 groups in this molecule. And we have the peak over here at about 172 ppm in the carbon, missing in the depth 90, missing in the depth 135. This one is clearly a quaternary. So we can put together at least a draft, a rough draft, of a tentative formula. We have 11 carbons, we have 1 CH, 7 CH2s, and 2 CH3s. That adds up to 21 protons, C11, H21. We're going to take it a little bit farther though. Look at that carbon, that quaternary carbon in the carbon spectrum. It's got a very distinctive chemical shift. It is in the carbonyl region and it's most consistent with an ester. So a tentative formula that we're going to put forth is C11H22O2. That gives us a formula. That gives us potential molecular weight. If this were truly an unknown, one way to try to confirm this would be if we could get a mass spectrum and confirm that this molecular weight works out. Or if we have indications that the molecule is at either you know, considerably larger or smaller than this, that we either on the wrong track, or we have, might have symmetry lurking in here as well. Together, carbon depth 90 and depth 135 particularly for these larger molecules, is an enormously powerful technique. And our next modules 
will will focus on uh, using them to figure out the structure of an unknown and I'll also give you an example of using some of these techniques in solving a real research problem that I and one of my colleagues were working on uh, recently.